Good morning from a beautiful day in southwest England. And with a light behind me like this, what better time to talk about our greatest ever artist, J.M.W. Turner. And in particular, we'll be having a good look at his most famous painting, The Fighting Tamara, painted at the end of 1838, by which time he was very popular, very famous, and regarded, even back then, as our greatest ever painter. So what we'll do first, though, is take a look at his early life, where he comes from, where he studies, etc. So if you look at the map above my left, you can see now uh, central London, and he was born in Covent Garden. In fact, his parents were married in St. Paul's Church in Covent Garden, and he was also christened there. Very sadly, his sister, when uh, William Turner is eight years old, his sister dies and her funeral is held in the church too. But his father was a barber and a wig maker. And the boy was very close to his father. In fact, later in life, uh, William Turner's father lived with him almost until he died. So, what we have here is a street that you can see and it's called Maiden Lane. And that connects with Southampton Street, and that connects with the Strand. When Turner is born, which is 1775, there was only a tiny path through Maiden Lane through to uh, Southampton Street. And that was only widened uh, to its current state at the big, uh, in the middle of the 19th century. Because originally, these streets were laid out in the 1630s. So... He had uh, a very, very short walk to go to art school because the Royal Academy back then set house on the Strand, although it did change location. So later in his life, the Royal Academy was situated in today's National Gallery, so they shared the space in Trafalgar Square. So Turner is regarded as a child prodigy really straight away. And his, some of his early drawings are displayed in his father's barber's shop. And many of the customers uh, immediately decide they would like one of these drawings. And so now on the screen, we can see one of his, well, one of the very earliest watercolors, in fact, that was displayed at the Royal Academy, which is quite extraordinary for a 15 year old. But this is an image of Lambeth Palace, which is where the Archbishop of Canterbury has his London residence. And we can see already uh, his incredible eye for detail. He's completely worked out how to organize perspective and it is a quite brilliant drawing. So this is Lambeth Palace. There's a very famous uh, painting by Turner, which is in the Tate Britain today. And this is the self portrait uh, when he was 24 years old so the date is 1790, 1799. The picture is recording, though, um, a very important moment in his life when he becomes an associate of the Royal Academy. And it's extraordinary for someone so young uh, to have this honour. He becomes a fully fledged member only just a few years later. But we can see that he's very proud of himself He's got a beautiful necktie on, so he's making himself look more important than perhaps actually he is. But nevertheless, he's got that enthusiastic look in his face, uh, clearly a quite brilliant painter. And also, interestingly, it's this image which forms the back of our new £20 note that we'll be looking at in a few minutes' time. So, almost straight away, he's able to start selling paintings which is not usual for someone that's so young. So well, one thing that he does start to do really quite early on in his career is go traveling to go sketching. Um, so he takes loads of notebooks with him. And an early example of his sketching is when he goes to Wales. And this image now that you can see, this is of Tintin Abbey. And Tintin Abbey is in South Wales. Uh, very close to where I grew up as a child. And I often use exaggerated adjectives, but it is jaw-droppingly beautiful. 
And so this image of Tintin Abbey is from 1794. But he returned repeatedly to Tintin. And it was uh, amazing growing up, certainly when I was about 17, 18, to know that not only had he been here, but also Wordsworth too, to this beautiful part of the world. Um, so J.M.W. Turner is often regarded as one of the greatest, if not the greatest ever, watercolorist. This is a very difficult medium to work in because uh, he would have been outside almost all the time doing this. That's another point to bear in mind that many of these works were done outside. And what that does is to predate uh, what the Impressionist artists did in France only just a few years later. A very famous work that Turner did, this is moving on a few years now, you can see above me to the left, is the burning of the Houses of Parliament. This is uh, a picture from 1834. And it's very typical of Turner. This actually is an oil painting, it's not watercolour. It's very typical of Turner because of the incredible use of light in the painting. And you can see uh, down on the uh, bottom left of the painting, moving up to the middle, uh, throngs of hundreds of people that would have been there to witness this terrible event. Um, and it's said that Turner was actually in a boat witnessing it from the River Thames. We can't be sure, but if he was, then he was taking a sketchbook with him. And typical of Turner, he would have taken that sketchbook uh, back to his studio to have worked on the oil painting later. Now, um, what he'd done is he'd set up uh, a studio actually in his house. And the studio became also a type of showroom. And from that point, um, he was able to sell his paintings really directly from home. And that's something that not always uh, other artists did. So now we look at the great painting itself. And what happened is that um, the, the, the famous ship HMS Temeraire was a warship that was directly involved in the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. Actually on my birthday, the 21st of October. Um, and the ship was originally commissioned in 1798. And the Battle of Trafalgar represented its one and only time in combat and the people of the United Kingdom knew exactly what this ship represented. They knew its story, so the ship itself was very famous. So it was on the, I think it was the 6th of September 1838, when it was dragged by a tugboat, that you can see, from uh, a place called Sheerness to Rotherhithe, and it was being sold by the Royal Navy, and it was bought by a Mr. Beetson, who, what, what, what would then do is he would break the ship up and sell the timber and other items from it. But Turner is taking a small liberty with what the ship would have looked like because it would not have had its masts on when it was dragged to the shipyard. There probably would have been two tugboats rather than one. And if you look over on the right, uh, certainly given where London is over on the extreme right, it's probable, uh, in fact highly likely, that you would have been looking at a sunrise, not a sunset. But Turner was very clear on this point, I paint what I can see, not what I know is there. He was, uh, well one of his jobs was he was, a, he was the professor of perspective at the Royal Academy, and so it was his job to give lessons to the younger art students, something that he did really up until, well, actually it was probably after the fighting Tamarai was finished that he stopped doing that, because this painting was painted when he was in his mid-60s. When the painting was first um, shown to the public in uh, the Royal Academy show of 1839, it first went on display in May 1839, it was immediately incredibly popular with people. And some of the older uh, sailors, Royal Navy people were extremely emotional in front of the painting because they knew exactly what it represented. At the time, we were trying to work out how we would commemorate uh, Admiral Horatio Lord Nelson, uh, Britain's most successful ever combat hero, because it was just about the time that the huge monument to him was being put up in Trafalgar Square. Trafalgar Square, prior to this, 
had been a conglomerate of very dark alleyways and it was cleared by Turner's friend John Nash to create uh, what we know as Trafalgar Square today. So what you, ba what you have, a desire to commemorate the life of Nelson, uh, but also it was just at the start of Queen Victoria's reign in 1839 and so the country was riding on this wave of um, I suppose patriotism and, and, and pride in the country too and this painting arrived at just the right time so it was incredibly popular. We can see um, the beautiful sunset over on the right uh, of the painting makes it uh, so so beautiful to look at. So if you go to the National Gallery today, uh, that it, it, it's a riot of different colours. Even now, the picture uh, has been very well looked after because it spent essentially its whole life in the National Gallery. Because remember that the Royal Academy shared with the National Gallery its space for a number of years, and Turner left this painting to the nation. Uh, in his will when he died in uh, 1851. So, if we look at the painting, what you can see is this beautiful ship over in the left in the distance, and it looks like a sort of ghost. And it represents the end of an era because it's the end of, uh, it's, pre it's, it's the pre-industrial revolution. After this, the ships are gonna be made of iron, and they're going to be driven by, by engines. And so it, it definitely does represent the end of the era, but what Turner's trying to do, he's also trying to show the future, and that's what the tugboat does, because it's driving into the future. And so from that point of view, people always assume that it's a sentimental picture, but not necessarily so. So there are different ways of reading this painting. Um, the painting, even if you know nothing about it, uh, is, is very, very popular with people even today. And as I said at the beginning of this, uh, the painting 15 years ago topped a poll in our country as the most popular painting in the United Kingdom. And it still holds that position Turner today. himself was very attached to the painting and he knew straight away how good it was. So he kept it with him all his life and refused to sell it. It only ever left him once and it went to the engraver Hogarth, not to be confused with William Hogarth, the artist. And um, it stayed with the engraver for several months and it was displayed there. But Turner wrote to the engraver asking uh, for his, he, he called the painting his darling, uh, to be returned to him. He was offered uh, a huge sum of money for the picture and uh, refused this offer. The offer was actually about £5,000, which in today's money uh, is about half a million pounds. So it was a vast sum of money. But he, he'd actually, uh, he'd become quite wealthy during his life and he had no need for uh, this huge uh, sum of money. It's strange actually that his studio and his house um, very very much deteriorated towards the end of his life and his housekeeper uh, allowed the house to deteriorate in this way uh, we can you can, we can now see a close-up actually of uh, the tug pulling it and you can see the water sluicing through and uh, the, the tug is almost sort of buzzing with activity so what Turner hasn't done is literally shown what it would have looked like because the next shot that you can, you can now see on the screen is an, an, an artist's view of actually what the Temeraire would have looked like uh, when it arrived in the yard just before it was broken up. And you can see uh, on this shot here, there are no sails on it, no masts. They've all been taken down. Um, one thing that did happen is that uh, the, uh, the wood that was sold uh, from the Temeraire was used for several different objects. There is a gong stand, which is in Balmoral Castle, which is a property of the Queen up in Scotland, but I've scoured the internet, I can't find an image of it. But one thing that you can see 
is a barometer, and this is this barometer is from the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich. You can see it's absolutely beautiful wood. And then um, also today, uh, this was announced uh, a couple of years ago, but it was actually printed and in circulation now, is the UK's new £20 note with Turner's image and the fighting Tamaraya on the image. And this is a very big deal for uh, the arts community in the United Kingdom, because up until this point, um, no artist had ever appeared on a banknote before, and it is fantastic that Turner is represented here. His self-portrait from 1799 is uh, represented as the main image, and the artist that's produced this image has had to work with the original painting. And so the, if you get up close to the note, if you take a, a magnifying glass to the new £20 note, uh, the artist has used almost like a kind of pointillist technique. So the, the, um, the way the face is painted is, is painted in a series of dots. We can see in the background, uh, the way the ship is painted, it has presented a challenge uh, for the artist that's designed the note, because of course it's a requirement that uh, everything is painted in purple. Now, if you look on the, if we look on the right hand side of the note, next to the Queen's head, we can see uh, a shape, and that shape there uh, that I'm pointing out now, this is the shape, that the, the, there are several different aspects of the new note that relate to Turner's life. So that shape there is the shape of the fountains in Trafalgar Square, and in the middle of that is the lighthouse at Margate. Turner spent uh, many, a lot of time in Margate, and also, just behind the, the uh, lighthouse is the new Turner Contemporary Museum uh, in Margate. Just above that is a sort of uh, a tiny castellated circle, and that is the staircase at the Tate Britain Museum. And Turner had left thousands of his paintings and watercolours to the nation when he died in 1851. And they are uh, that they are housed at uh, a new gallery called the Claw Gallery at the Tate Britain. The bottom left of the note, you, we can see a window on the note, and that is an actual window, and it represents uh, his journeys to Tintern Abbey, and it's very similar to the Great East Window at Tintern Abbey, and so that's a feature of the note, uh, which is fantastic for my point of view, given that's where I grew up. And then we can see there is a, a, um, a quote from Turner, light is therefore colour, that's written on the note. And that is from a lecture that Turner gave to the Royal Academy in 1818. And then we can see his signature, and that signature is actually from his will. And his will is part of the reason why Turner appears on the banknote. It's because he left this vast body of work to our nation. So, certainly today, uh, Turner would be regarded as, as I said, our greatest ever painter. He had a huge influence on the Impressionist painters from France that came a generation later. And so, uh, this uh, ends my talk on uh, the Fighting Tamara. Uh, this magnificent painting in the National Gallery. So uh, next week we'll be looking at one of Turner's contemporaries. We will be looking at Liberty Leading the People by Eugene Delacroix. Thank you.